Okay, so we're going to try changing the way in which we write code. We're about to make our code an awful lot more efficient. So what we've done so far is we've written our code which essentially works line by line. So we've created some really structured code down here. So using a simple program, you can see up here, this program is called Using Procedures. I've got sysutils, which you should already be using. And then we've got a variable called my number. Now we've used sequential code so far, and sequential is essentially line by line by line. Now this is the beginning of our main program here, and you can see the end is highlighted, and we know it's the main program because it's got that dot. Now the first point of our main program, so what it will do is it will look for this begin, and then it'll look for the right line. So here, that's the first line of code. It's going to write line to the screen, and it's going to say, please enter a number between one and five. It's then going to do a read line, which is just a standard function call, and it will put whatever we've entered here into the variable my number. So let's have a look up here. There's my number, it's an integer. Okay, now we haven't got any validation in here. It's just a very quick program. You might want to put some validation in there to make sure you do actually enter a number. And the next thing is slightly different. We've got this function call here, or in fact a procedure call, to draw person. Now draw person isn't something which exists within um, our Pascal libraries, it's not a built-in function, it's actually something which I created above. So it's a custom written fu function, or it's a custom written procedure. Um, and what we're doing is we're passing information in. Now you've already done this before. Up here, we pass a value into the right line which is here. Now that there is a standard piece of text. Um, so we are passing there by value. Now here we're passing in the name of our variable. So we're looking at saying, I want you to take in the value which is held by my number. Um, and that is called passing by reference. You can see that there. So passing in a variable is called passing by reference. And the data which is passed into this procedure, so this here, so my number, that is known as a parameter. So the parameters which are passed in are essentially the values that you want your procedure to use. So we're going to pass in my number, which will be a single integer, and it's going to come up here. It's going to jump out at this stage of our main program into this procedure called draw person. And um, whatever my number is going to be passed into this parameter here, which is called img, and it's of type integer. We've seen this before when we declare variables. So it's saying there, img is an integer. You can see there, uh, type integer, which is a long int. Now, really interestingly, we've got another var statement here. Now, what that means is we can see there's already a var up here. So it's like we've doubled up. Now, what that means is that i of an integer only exists within the procedure. And it's known as a local variable. Let's put that in there known as a local variable and a local variable is only seen within the procedure the main program cannot call i it doesn't exist it can't see it um, and in the same vein actually my number doesn't exist within the procedure because it's local to the main program so a local variable is has the ability to be used multiple times um, because i could have an i here I could also have an I up here, and they wouldn't interfere with each other. Um, okay, so I is just our counter, and the reason why we need that is because we're going to have a for loop. So what we're doing is we're passing in a number here to image, and we're saying for I equals 1, okay, so standard for loop, all the way up to image, or up to what our user has sent to us, um, I'm just pointing this little man here to the screen. So if I typed in a 3 here, it would pass a three up here, then it would come in down here, I would become one, it would repeat this three times because remember that a for loop runs for a set number of iterations. And then what it will do is it will jump back out to our main program at this line here, and it will carry on down our program. Obviously it's going to ignore our comments, um, and I'm just going to put in here a right line, I think, so that we can show that it's coming back into our main program. Um, end of the code. Okay, so let's run that and see what it's doing.
Okay, there it is. Please enter a number between one and five. Okay, so that's there. I'm going to enter in three. Okay, now when I press enter, what's going to happen is it's going to run this line here. It's going to pass in my three to my number. That is then going to run all the way up here. It's going to pass in the three to the image. It's then going to run this three times. And then it's going to come back out and it's going to write end of code. Okay, let's try it out. There we go. So it's run up. It's come into here, it passed three into there. It came up here, it ran this three times and then it jumped back out to this stage and then it ran the rest of the code in my main program. Okay, now the reason why procedures are really useful is because I could then call this multiple times. So I have draw person once here, but what happens if I want to have it more than once? Oh, that was very loud. Okay, so I've got end of the code. So let's have another one here and say, well, let's write line. And let's say um, now doubling your number. Okay, so doubling the number, um, I'm going to call draw person again. But this time I'm going to say my number times two. So that should take whatever a number I put in there and double it and then call this again. And then eventually we get end of code. So it should jump out of my main program twice, but I only have to ever write this code once. So the reason for having this procedural code is that it's making your life an awful lot easier because you only have to use one line to call it, pass your parameters in, and it does all of this code for me twice. So let's run it and have a look. Okay, so let's put in a number two and see what happens. So there we go, we can see it's drawn two, now doubling your number. Let's see, did it do four? One, two, three, four, end of the code. So I managed to draw their six little men with two lines of code. Okay, so give it a go. See if you can now use one of your challenges to add in a procedure and make your code more efficient.